So basically, I want to talk about like why I love rowing and still love it to this day. And I would start about really where I am, where I was rather, four months ago. So my last time I actually jumped in the boat was head of the Charles this fall. And uh, I was racing with the younger guys on the national team were, you know, vying for a spot to compete leading up to Rio. And we had a pretty not so great result and uh, kind of down in the dumps about it. And you kind of get to that point, maybe with anything, and you're like, you know, do I still love this? I'm out of college, what am I still doing? And I was working and still working at the time, and I kind of got away from rowing, and I started putting it away. I got really fat. So I was like, all right, I think I'm done. And I stayed in contact with the guys as they were training. And it was probably right around uh, the final race to get into the pair for the Olympics. Tom and Johan were racing to compete in that event. And uh, it just came up short. They set the US world record, but the team had beat them. So Anders and uh, Nari were going. And Tom reached out to me and was like, do you want to jump in a boat? Uh, you know, we're going to ask a few coxswains here in Philly, do you want to get in? And I said, yeah, why not? And I didn't think much of it. And again, I hadn't been in a boat for, you know, four months. And I got into a practice, left work early. And I was like, yeah, this is great. See you guys. I'm out. And I uh, jumped in the boat, and I was hooked. It's like, you're in there, and you just lay in that freaking seat. And the boat's taking off, and it's like, I'm getting chills just talking about it, and it's like, it's awesome, and now that you're getting into it, like, you know, we've been training now for six weeks, okay, the world's on the 15th, it's just, it's magical when you get in that boat. I jokingly say, like, if I were to ever do drugs, I would do rum, because it's the best thing in the world, like, when you're taking a boat at 36, and you're punching along, and, like, there's no one out there, and you're just, like, looking down lane three. I mean, to me, that's the best feeling in the world. And I really hope you guys have that feeling. Coxswain, when you're watching that, and you're looking in the strokes' eyes, and they're, like, going crazy, and you can see the blood rushing through there. I mean, that's honestly, like, I thrive off that. It's just feeding off of that. And what I always found was I was a crap Like, absolutely terrible. But, uh. I think like my fifth and sixth grade basketball team. Um, I know I'm gonna <laughs> laugh again, but I, I would I would chuck up threes all the time. I mean garbage. I'd be lucky if they like, <laughs> they hit like the rim, and my coach would pull me out. But like there's this one game, and there's a reason for the story. There's this one game we're like playing St. Mary's, which is like the powerhouse in this area, whatever. And like I chucked up a three, and I can hear him like shouting like don't. And it drops, and like I and I, like I go nuts, and the boys go nuts, and like he pats me on the back, and he's like, literally, like you're a terrible athlete, but you're absolutely the backbone of this team. And like from then on, like I always approach anything just like I'm gonna suck at it, but I gotta be the backbone. And like, but I, we're like we're joking, but it's true. Like that's what being the cops and like is about, just being the backbone for the boat. And that's what, you know, really inspires me every day, cutting out of work at 4 o'clock to get in that boat. And to kind of change the subject to something more grim, but it's like, that's so relevant throughout any competition. It's like, you're going to have your ebbs and flows, you're going to have your great days, and you're going to have your downright terrible days. And my downright terrible day is July 16th. And it was the last day of selection for the, uh, you know, the U23 boat. And I'm like sitting on the freaking curb at the Princeton Boathouse, you know, hungry as hell because I'm never at weight. I'm always like not eating. And uh, Coach Cook and Coach Smith are just, you know, grinning. And I'm just like, in my head, I'm like, all right, are you going to freaking tell us who's going on the boat or not? The team's been selected. It's me and the other coxie. And we're sitting there. And he's like, all right, the boat's loaded, and we're like, yeah, and I'm like supposed to drive people to Ithaca the week before we leave, 
And uh, he's just like, all right, um, I can't think of his name. Uh, Paul, Paul is a good name. You can see how much I respect him. Uh, <laughs> and he's like, Paul's going to be the cops. And I'm like, yeah, great. And just like, you know, like, you know, taking a big swallow that big gold in your throat. And I'm like, all right, good. And I go up to Coach Cook, and I'm, I don't know, I'm pretty not, I'm bitter, but I'm like reserved because I know like I'm young and I got to be on the, and I, my goal is to be on this team, you know, going forward. And I shake his hand, and it, it didn't really like quite set in until like I'm on the Route 1 heading home, and I'm like falling in the car, and I'm getting away from everyone using my mom's car radio up on, and I'm like, all right, you know, screw this, no one's around. And I had realized I'd, I'd failed, but more than anything else, I had realized I had set my goal the wrong way. And uh, Coach Cunningham has heard this before. I will lead you into my senior speech at Penn. But uh, that summer, I had set my goal to make the U23 team. And I subconsciously set that to be my goal. And I, I accomplished it. Like, good job, Will. Great. But July 16, 2013, I sat on there and it's still like my worst memory of my life. And you know, I got home and I said, like, what did I do wrong? And for me, again, this is different for rowers, but for Akasa is I didn't set myself up to succeed that year. And I said to myself, heading in to my junior year of college, I gotta, you know, get feedback from Coach Meyer you know, once a month or twice a month. I gotta start journaling what happened, literally, from the time we docked, from the time we stepped back from the dock. I gotta start taking the metrics seriously, like, what's the wind? What was the current today? What was the water height? What were we doing 500 meters on this workout? What did we do a month ago? And try to think through that. And I think that was the turning point in my career, which I consider the turning point, was that year's kind of settling down and saying, what do I want in this sport? Do I just want to make camp, or do I want to, you know, go for it, make the team? And I think when you approach things in rowing or in life, you want to set your goal realistically, but set it just higher. And I say that because my example I used in my senior speech was, you know, with school, oh, I want to... I want to get a 3-5. Well, you're going to come up short, I guarantee it. Nine times out of ten, you're going to come up short. Say you want to get a 4.0, and you're going to get the 3.5. Same thing with running. Don't say, I want to make selection camp. Set yourself up to win a gold medal. Because, you know, you, uh, you just, it's, it's luck sometimes. It's, uh, success is the intersection of preparation and luck. So you want to get a gold medal. If you get luck, you're going to get it. But if you're not, you might fall short. And then what I want to close with you guys on is what I really found about rowing, which is, I think, different from most sports, is that, again, I don't mean to change it up, but from a COPSA perspective, it's this idea of you know, managing one another. And you get it real different, and I'll give you my experience. Like, in an eight, which I'm so used to, and I'm sure you guys are used to, or fours in your club programs. Um, you get used to like really managing people and kind of managing what's going on. And what I kind of realized with conversations with Coach Meyer was, you know, kind of take a step back and enjoy the moment. And that's something that you guys might get caught up on. And I know I talked about being successful and you know working through your fa failures, but there's that piece in rowing, and I think in any sport, where you have to acknowledge what's going on, because it is something wonderful. And I remember like my last two months at Penn were just amazing, because I stopped worrying about all the little things and started having a lot of fun. Like we freaking went to Home Depot and Lowe's to find stupid stickers to put on our boat, which is still the background on my phone, of pasta farm which is the dumbest thing ever, but is like the most fun. And we had the most fun freaking running around Philadelphia getting stickers of lettering. And I mean, 
I think you, there's always that balance of this is what I want to do and be successful at, but this is what I want to move on to doing. So you got to find that there. And uh, I would say the biggest challenge right now that I have in the sport, again, from the Coxon perspective, is my whole career from freshman year of high school to senior year of college has been in an age where I've relied off my eyes for everything, from looking at the eyeballs of the stroke seat, from looking at the blades, and now I'm in a blind boat, and these two men have asked me to you know, kind of steer them home, but to give them feedback, and if I give them feedback of like, you know, finish better or something, they're like, you know, what the, what does that mean? And, uh, I've really had to, in these six weeks, really rely on feeling and giving very specific direction. Like, Johan, I can feel you clacking your Ula in the blade. So that's been a real challenge for me. So what I sum up here is I'm going on 10 years in the sport, and I'm learning every day. So if you're going to have fun, keep learning every day.